Lord Reed will explain the judgment of the court. The appellant was convicted in proceedings in Scotland of the possession of a handgun and of assaulting two police officers by repeatedly pointing the gun at them. The only issue at his trial was whether he was the person who had the gun and pointed it at the officers. He was identified at the trial by both officers. One had recognized him at the time of the incident, while the other had picked him out from a selection of photographs shortly afterwards. Some years after the trial, the police disclosed material which had not been disclosed at the time of the trial, including statements given by witnesses. One witness gave a description of a gunman which was inconsistent with the appearance of the appellant. Two others failed to identify the appellant when shown his photograph. The police also disclosed that they had found fingerprints belonging to someone else in the car in which the gunman had escaped and that that person had a criminal record. The appellant then appealed against his conviction on the basis that the non-disclosure of this material had deprived him of a fair trial. His appeal was refused. He now appeals to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court unanimously dismisses his appeal. The court emphasizes the limited nature of its jurisdiction in criminal appeals from Scotland. It does not sit as a criminal appeal court exercising a general power of review. On the contrary, decisions of the High Court of Justiciary in Scotland are by statute final and not subject to review subject only to a small number of exceptions. The exception which is relevant in this case is one which allows this court to determine what are called compatibility issues, that is to say, questions as to whether a public authority has acted unlawfully under the Human Rights Act, or has acted incompatibly with EU law, or whether an act of the Scottish Parliament is incompatible with convention rights or EU law. In the case of McInnes, decided in 2010, this court decided that the question whether the material should have been disclosed to the defense depends on whether it might have materially weakened the prosecution case or materially strengthened the defense case. If that first test is satisfied, the question whether the non-disclosure of material which ought to have been disclosed deprived the accused of a fair trial depends on whether there is a real possibility that the jury would have arrived at a different verdict. In the present case, the High Court of Justiciary applied both those tests. It decided that some of the undisclosed material ought to have been disclosed, but also that there was no real possibility that the jury would have arrived at a different verdict if it had been disclosed. The court explained in detail why it had reached those conclusions. Before this court, the High Court's decision that there was no duty to disclose some of the undisclosed material was challenged on the basis that material would now be disclosable under the policies currently applied by the Crown. That is not, however, the test. It may be that the Crown's current policies go beyond what the law requires. The High Court's decision that there was no real possibility of the juries arriving at a different verdict was also challenged on the basis that although the High Court purported to apply the correct test, its conclusion was so manifestly wrong that it could not in reality have applied it. It was, however, made clear by this court in McInnes that it has no jurisdiction to review whether the High Court applied the test correctly to the facts. In the present appeal, the court reaffirms that principle. It finds, on an examination of the High Court's reasoning, that it not merely identified the correct test, but applied it to the facts. The appeal is accordingly dismissed.